Hi everyone, today I'm releasing the City Scatter tool for Blender. If you've seen the previous announcement video then you know exactly what this is about. The purpose of this tool is to help you concept cityscapes and skylines. It takes pre-made objects from collections in the outliner and scatters them in the scene depending on the method of your choice. Keep in mind while we talk about how it works, this is not supposed to be a comprehensive city simulation tool. This is just a combination of scattering algorithms inspired by city layouts intended to help you create artwork. There is a free and a paid version of the tool available, so everyone can get their hands on the script to dissect and play around with. The free version contains the script with placeholder objects and a basic lighting setup, whereas the paid version contains the script along with a comprehensive suite of demonstration artwork in a nicely composed scene, ready for you to adjust for your own projects. As for the contents of the tool, there's a circular method which scatters the objects within a major radius and recalculates the positions of objects to prevent overlapping. The neighbor distance threshold as well as other generation values can be changed in the operator properties so you can adjust the scattering behavior for yourself. By default, this method reads from three collections representing large, medium, and small objects. Larger objects will be present towards the center of the city, progressively becoming medium and then small shapes towards the outer edges. This is useful for quickly coming up with nice looking compositions. Naturally, due to the proximity detection of objects, this can significantly slow down the procedure when large numbers are used. As well as the circular method, there is a rectangular version which creates a city grid. This reads objects from one collection, unlike free in the circular alternative, making the selection of objects completely random. Since the layout and distance between objects is completely uniform, you can take advantage of this to create street level content, so long as the street pieces are connected to the major building objects. Regarding street level content, the circular method currently has no way of allowing for this because the space between the objects is not uniform in any way. However, if there is enough demand, there is a possibility in the future for adding a pathfinding tool to create branching roads in between the structures. Anyway, let's take a look at what's included in the files and how to actually use the tool. When you open one of the files, this is what it will look like. On the left side, we have a couple of text editor windows. The top one has a readme, which explains how to use the tool and also provides some useful links. Underneath is the actual Python script for the tool. We will need to run this once to get it to work, but we'll come back to that in a second. In the middle we have the 3D view. On the right we have the outliner, and if we take a look in here you will see three main collections for storing the source objects, called Buildings Large, Buildings Medium, and Buildings Small. As well as that, there's a collection called Generation Result. This is where the script will end up putting all the newly generated objects. When the script makes copies of the original object, it creates instances rather than full duplications. This means that any changes made to the original objects will also occur to the created instances. This also massively reduces the file size when saving the generated results. So let's take a look at how to run the tool. In the text editor window with the script, you want to click the text menu, then choose run script. This will register the classes with the current instance of Blender. Just keep in mind that you will have to do this every time you open the file. Then, once we've done that, hover over the 3D view, open the search function, I believe it's F3 by default, but I have mine rebound to the spacebar because I use it often. Inside the search bar, type city, and you will see the two main operations appear. Ignore the scatter city option on my screen. You will not have this, this is just some loose code from the new version of Biogen that's in development. Here we have city scatter rectangular and city scatter circular. In both the free and the paid versions of the tool, I have included two demonstration files, one for each of these operations. At the moment I have the demo file open for the circular mode, so we can take a look at how it works. So if I click on city scatter circular now, you will see that nothing happens, and that's because the city I already had in the scene matches perfectly with the parameters that have been saved with this operation. You'll notice that as I change the values here, the city will begin to change. Whenever you call the city scatter tool, it deletes all the objects inside the generation result collection and creates new ones to replace them. That means that if you accidentally click away and lose the properties window, you don't need to undo the operation or manually delete the objects. Instead, you just need to call the same operation again, and you can continue to edit the result. One interesting thing you can do with this is adjust the values to watch the city grow. The value called radius defines the overall size of the city. If I put this at a value of 1, you can see there's only enough space for a single building to exist, but as I increase the value, more and more will start to appear. Their positions will shift as the system tries to stop them from overlapping. Notice that as the radius expands, smaller objects will begin to appear. That's because, as stated, larger objects will be present towards the center of the city, whereas smaller objects will be present towards the edges. If you look in the properties window, you can see how we can control this. You can see the text field for collection large, medium, and small. This is where you provide the name of the collections that contain the different sizes of objects. You can also change the distance from the center of the city these objects will start to appear. So, if I wanted more larger objects to occupy the city, then I could increase the large radius value. I'll change it to 10 just to demonstrate. 
If we scale the city down and take a look from the top, we can see how the overlap detection works. Whenever a building is placed, it makes a note of its position. Then when another building is placed, it checks to see how far it is from that position, and if it's too close, then it will move. The minimum distance one building can be from another is called the neighbor threshold. You can see as I turn the value down to zero, the buildings now start to overlap. But we also get this cool random splat effect that I'm sure some people can use for abstract artwork. As I scale this value up, notice how the average spacing between the objects increases as overlaps are now prevented. The parameter, called max cycles, is a preventative measure to stop Blender from crashing. Sometimes the system will not have enough space to fit the maximum number of buildings. It will continuously check to find more space to put new objects, but in some cases there is no more space. Then this will create an infinite loop, as the system keeps trying to evaluate new positions. Max cycles acts as a maximum number of evaluations, so once this number of checks has occurred, the system will stop trying to place new buildings and just assume there is no more space. Alright, let's take a look at the rectangular demo. As previously stated, there is only one collection in the outliner of this file, because there is no high to low distribution of sizes by distance. Instead, the sizes of buildings is completely random, which allows for some interesting views inside the city grid. If you take a look at the properties of the operation, it will look quite familiar. We have the regular random seed value, then we have the collection name. The random placement value says whether or not we should have a building place in every cell. Enabling this will give a more scattered layout. Random rotation allows buildings to be rotated by plus or minus 90 or 180 degrees. The city offset value will shift the start point of the city backwards. This is because it will expand diagonally on the x and y axis. The x and y size values are self-explanatory. They represent the number of rows and columns in the grid. And the cell size is the size of the actual source objects. So if you wanted to create larger cells on the grid, representing larger objects, then you could change this value. I recommend staying around a similar size, just due to the default clipping distances for Blender cameras, unless you need some super close-up shots. You could easily do some cool fly-through animations with this. I also bet people could come up with some cool desktop backgrounds using repeating city patterns. So that's a general breakdown of how to use the two methods in the tool. Make sure to download the free version, or perhaps show your support by picking up a copy of the paid version. For the rest of the video, I just want to share some other add-ons available for Blender that go beyond the functionality of the city scatter tool. If you're interested in more scattering techniques, perhaps not even for buildings, but also for nature scenes, then you should really take a look at the scatter add-on available on the Blender market. This tool is ridiculously simple to use with a nice variety of pre-made ecosystems. With a few clicks, you can get some lush effects, which can be easily modified and layered together. I combined it with the city scatter tool for a bit of fun, and managed to come up with this test scene in just under 10 minutes. It's lots of fun to play with, and I've barely scratched the surface, so I'm definitely interested in playing around with it more in the future. Another paid tool I want to give a shout out to is one called Scene City. Somehow this slipped under my radar for a long time, but it's a full city generator for Blender with an impressive set of features. It includes a node editor for describing the layout of the city, and even comes pre-packaged with template content. There's even functionality for growing a network of roads. The developers of both of these add-ons are actively working on updates, so if you're interested in what they have to offer, then you can follow both of them on Twitter. This seems to be a really good way of keeping up with development updates. And if you're ever interested in picking up a copy of the add-ons, then by using my affiliate links in the description of this video, you will also be massively helping to support this channel. Now just to end this video, I have one more announcement to make. To celebrate the release of the City Scatter tool, my previous generation tools will be 50% off on Gumroad for one week only, so now would be the best time to complete the collection. I hope you enjoy my work, and I can't wait to see what cool things you'll make. So thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Right, no, if awesome. I look through the uh, Py or the Python files, will there like actually be comments in there of yeah. like yeah. random stuff? There's messages to myself. There's like there's my logo <laughs> in ASCII format, and then there's there's like there's variables that don't do anything, but I've just I have them just for fun. And there's like a variable <laughs> called something like I don't want to join your super secret boy band, which is a reference to Marvel. <laughs>